Hello, welcome back to my channel and here I am with another video. How are you doing today, my friend? I hope you are having a wonderful time. Here I am. I am so happy, ready to start showing you this project. This is a 1927 Ford Harak. And I will have a, a lot of videos related to this project. But on this video, will be two videos related to this trunk. Why the trunk? Because I will start right here first. And on this video, we'll show you how you can cut the wood, start giving the right shape, uh, preparing the floor. I will show you all that on this video. You can see the floor, how it is. It's not even. I have to put a wood in there, make it even. The customer want a wall and want the battery behind the wall. So I will do that. And I will make uh, the panel for right here on the left and the right side. And you will see most of the whole project. I will ignore the easy thing because I think that is not necessary for you to watch me how to do it. The easy thing. This is uh, I will use this kind of insulation. There are a lot of different insulation. This is a good insulation. You can buy this kind of insulation in a lot of places. Just search on your in, uh, web browser and you will see a lot of places near your area. So I put this kind of insulation on the whole floor and I will put behind the the two front door but I will show you right here just in the small section of this floor how did I did it I just peel it remove the plastic put them on the floor and I use a rod and start putting them onto the floor you can see the floor surface is not a uh, plain I will put a wood in there because the customer want that part flat he don't want to see like an even part of that trunk so you will see me doing it but first this is the first thing that we do this kind of insulation is expensive um, a lot of customers who have a, like a classic car they ask for this kind of insulation on the model a new car or oh, once out of the hundred of the customer ask for this kind of insulation but it's rare for a uh, car uh, for the customer with a new car to ask for this kind of insulation. Why? Because it's expensive. I just made that car in there because the customer had to access to there. It's like a kind of sensor, the uh, gas stand sensor, and he need that area clean. You can see I already put the insulation, the entire floor, all. And not only that, on top of that will be more insulation, like a half inch thickness. And then on top of that will be the carpet. But right now we're going to concentrate it right here. You will get the measuring tape and start measuring the front part, then the rear part. And it's not the same. It's like a wire on the front. I start using a circular blaze, start cutting the wood. This wood is like half inch thickness, but uh, it say that, but uh, if you get the measuring tape, it's not even half inch, it's less than half inch. I don't know why they label it high half inch when it's not. Maybe when they cut it, they take that a little bit more than supposed to. And I am cutting the floor of this trunk. I will use in this wood that part that I just removed for the battery. And you can see, it. I don't know if you can notice right now, but I tape a little bit more in the back, trim a little bit more in the back. And right here, there has to be like a access door for that part. And I'm going to make it. The custom has to be able to to reach whatever it is, is underneath the insulation and I'm going to cut it. Before you put wood on the floor, you have to make sure what exactly the customer wants to have access. Like right here, the customer say, I want uh, wood, I want this area flat, but I want to have easy access to that part the gas tanks i don't know if it is the sensor or something but he need to have a easy access to that part so that's what i am doing this 
because later on if he if he wants to remove this wood it's not gonna be that easy he can still able to remove it but it's not gonna be that easy so i am putting those uh kind of chipboard in there because i'm going to put a trunk lining material and i want to increase that depth or that thing why the thickness of the material on top of that um, chipboard that i put i put wood same thing right here something simple this is something simple and this it is a two by two why this two by two on the front area because if it a corner put something on the floor or this trunk i don't want to go all the way and get underneath the seat the rear seat that's what i'm putting that wood something to stop whatever the customer put them on there and you can see him on there i put that wood in there i didn't show you but i just put that piece and you can see the customer will have a easy access to that part just put this on there and there it is so right now we're going to start cutting the size but before i'm going to make like a pattern for that thing i am using a 1a uh waterproof door panel board I don't know what they call waterproof to that mat material. It's not waterproof, but that's how they call it. And I start making like a pattern in for the door panel. I prefer using this method. I have been trying a lot of method to make like a pattern for those kind of panel, but this is the easiest way for me. Maybe for you, it's not it's not the easiest way to do it. But for me, this is the easiest way. See, I just cut a strip or two inches of that material. I put glue, then I put some staple and hold it. I get another piece. And whatever shape it is on there, I have to copy on that pattern. I get another piece and put them on there. It had glue. That's why you see I just put them on there and stay in there because I already put glue. Then I get the other piece, the bigger piece, and look. So simple how to make that pattern. So simple. I just put them on there. You see me putting glue in the to make sure it's not going to move, I just put some staple. Same thing on the top right here. That part, it has to be a little bit loose. Keep on mind, you have to know the waist of the material, how thick it is the material. Because the material is thick, that's kind of heavy duty leather, you have to make sure that piece is loose. So after I cut that piece, I have to transform it into a wood. I have to come into the table and cut the wood. It will be two pieces. I am using NDF half inch. Why half inch and not quarter of an inch or one eight? Because I'm going to make a design and that design will have a lot of staple. That's why I'm doing this out of a half inch NDF. Okay, then I put glue. I cut like a one piece or two and a half inches for whatever that door, uh, that panel it is, and put it with glue, put staple, make it strong. You might ask, what is that piece for? Stay tuned, you will see it later. I know some of you already know this project, this process, because you have been doing this for a long time. Same thing on the other side, two panels. Okay, I got it right here. Got the two sizes already. You can see it. That piece you have to get in easily in there. If you go in tight without the material, you have to sand it. Because with the material, it will increase a little bit more the size. You can see those pieces that I put 
will be to hold that door, access door to the battery. I will put a line in there and I will put a two by two behind. To do that, I have to make sure it is a straight. I don't want to be like crooked. I have to be straight. Then when I notice it's straight, I just draw a line. And that two by two will be half inch behind that line that I just draw. Same thing right here. Why half inch? Because the NDF wood, it is less than a half inch. With that poster, it will be a half inch thickness. So I just draw a line right here because right there will be another two by two. This is so important to prepare and you will start preparing everything according, according to what the customer wants. You see I get the measuring tape, I know it is 37 on the bottom, 37 and a half on the bottom and 37 and a half on the top. Why? Because I put the, uh, the label in there. 37 and a half by 20. I take these pieces, I don't need it right here. Then I remove this. To remove this, it is easier. But in case if the customer wants to remove it when everything is done, he has to remove the back seat. That's what we have to make sure what exactly uh, the customer wants. That material that I am putting glue, it is a trunk lining. I am putting a lot of glue because I will wrap that wood with trunk lining. This is what the customer is going to see on the end? No. The carpet will be on top. What kind of carpet? Will be a wolf carpet. It's a kind of expensive carpet. And to work with that carpet is not that easy. Eh? I put glue around underneath and I put glue all on the surface on top. You see, all glue in there. Then I get the material, both pieces have glue already. The glue that I am using is called land down top and trim glue. That's the glue that I always use. That glue in that part. This series is not hard. This series is the easiest thing, but it's so important to make it nice. Even the customer is not going to see that thing. A lot of people don't cover that wood. They just paint it. Sometimes when the customer wants something cheap, uh, you know, there are some customers, believe me, some customers spend a lot of money on the car, like in an engine and in the paint, but they don't want to spend money on the interior. They want something cheaper on the interior. And it doesn't make sense because the car is so beautiful. It's a classic car. But they don't want to spend money on the interior. So that is when we have to um, go for something cheap. Sometimes I made a, a floor flat by using wood and I don't cover I don't wrap it with material. I just paint it. Because the customer don't want to pay. That's not make sense. I know. That's not make sense. But we don't have no choice. And we have to explain everything to the customer. So I almost uh, end in wrapping that piece with trunk lining material. You can see it. And now we'll just see utility knife to shrink around because to make it look nice. Okay, I got this part. This is the two by two that I mentioned before. What you see me that I am holding my hand, that is a Velcro, that is the a male part. The Velcro, I just put glue, put glue on the two by two too, and then I glue it together. Uh, should I leave that piece just with glue? I don't recommend you to do that. I recommend you to put a staple. 
I am putting a staple just in case you know when both pieces stick it together you want to remove one of them uh, the other piece might come out together too that's what I recommend you to put a staple on it and I will do that in two more two by two two more pieces or two by two okay that is the piece that is the floor and this is the pieces the two by two those um, panels that are going to be on the side is going to be next to that two by two do you remember this remember that line that i drop draw that two by two will be at least half inch behind that line So I just have to make sure to do that. Same thing right here on the other side. I don't know if you know it, but I I put a, like a posture pin in there. I make a hole and that wood is holding with two upholstery pins. Same thing on the front. Right there. Okay. That is a strong. I'm going to take. I'll um, cover that piece too. I didn't show you because that piece is easier to do it, but I wrap it with trunk lining too. And then I put this big piece, the floor, and you can see it. Look nice. You can see that two by two. I put velcro on it. The male part of the velcro is in there. And I will put the female on this one. And this piece has to get in easily. Okay. This is at 37 and a half inch. Inch. Very important. Why? Because the wood that is going to be there is at 37 and a half inches. And by 20. I didn't cut this by 20. Because I only need the top shape. Because it's not a straight. That's all what I needed. I need to get that shape of the top part. And I just put them on there, even on the sides, even on the top. Then whatever is less on the on, on the side, I will trim it. And I, I adjust this uh, saw, circular saw, a little bit more than half inch. Why? Because I am, the cut that I make it is not straight. I adjust it a little bit more. Because this circular base is stop, and I understand why it's stop because I am cutting like a corn. But by adjusting the right height of that blade, it don't stop. See, I cut that part. Then I use the jigsaw to cut that section. If you have to cut a little bit more, I will later. Not a problem. You saw how easy I cut the top part of this uh, access door using that blackboard. So simple. You don't have to get a big piece or uh, whatever to make a template, a pattern. No, just a small piece. And I just push it. That piece you have to get in there loose, not tight. Keep on mind, you have to know the weight of the material with the phone. The space right, right there is 14 inches. The customer will be able to remove the access door and put whatever he wants in there. Behind that part will be the backrest wall. You can see it looks beautiful, but he's not gonna see it. Everything is gonna be covered with a nice, beautiful design. 100% out of leather. From le relic case, and from veteran there it is i will wrap the access door in there with a uh, trunk lining too will be nice stay tuned for the rest of this video this is the part one stay tuned for the part two my friend if you enjoyed this video don't forget to uh, give me a like 
and the comment uh, negative or positive will be welcome so thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned for the next video related to this car plus related to the 1960 Ford Ranch Wagon I have a lot of videos related to that car too and I decided to put this one ahead of those ones so thank you so much see you on the next video bye bye